put the wrong side on the ground. Oops. Bed is back on, lower drum is in, fire tube is in. So I was going to move on to the condensate tank, but the only tanks I have right now are 10 inches in diameter. I've got way more space than that and I want to utilize it. So I'm going to hold off on that till I find the right tank. So what else can I do right now? So the bottom barrel is all in. I'm happy with how everything sits on it. Although I did cut it very close between the barrel and the tank. But hey, there's still an air gap. And if that tank's gonna be full of tar, the more heat that's next to it to keep it flowing, the better. So that's okay. Um, I'm gonna utilize this inside corner here. When my uh, hopper is constructed, I'm gonna have it drop in. I haven't decided if it'll be in the rail or straight into the tank. One, one or the other, I'll figure that out. Well, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be in the side of the rail here. That leaves me the full two inches to build the headboard at a two inch pipe. Then I got the side rails to do. Uh, really glad that I didn't build the access door because what I have traced out right there, there'd be about that much of it underneath of the bed. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how big I can build this hatch, but I can't really do that until I know exactly where the bed floor is gonna be. And I don't have an eight foot level to go all the way across and tell me exactly where the floor will end up. So I'm gonna hold off on that. So I think the next thing, time to build the hopper. Moving on to the hopper. The Wilbur Smith build was what I'll be following, same as I did on my last truck. But every measurement can change a little bit. There's no hard science fact to this. You know, one system fits all, it's gotta be exact. Each measurement can change and it's really what your barrels will give you. For building the hopper, we need two complete open top 55 gallon drums. The reason for that, we need the bottom of both drums and we need the top ceiling edge of both drums. Because one top edge is going to get flipped over upside down and sealed down to the fire tube. One of them will be at the top helping to create our puffer lid system. The bottoms of these barrels will be utilized to create the water gutters or the condensation gutters that will pick up all the condensate from the superheated wood in the hopper as it funnels down. Like I said, every measurement can change. It all depends on what your barrel will give you. And what I mean by that is where the ribs line up on your barrel. So I've got two barrels here. <clears throat> obviously both used. I bought both of them off offer up from the same guy. They did the same purpose, but these barrels are not identical. This one has the first rib at three inches down. This one has the first rib at four inches down. I can still make these work. And this is what I was saying. It's, it's going to change for whatever barrels you have. Um, we want at least three inches from the ceiling edge down when we cut these barrels off because this one has a rib right there i'm gonna have to cut it either longer or shorter i don't want a shallow gutter and i don't want my bottom gutter too close to the top of the fire tube where it would boil the condensate so this one instead of cutting it shorter i'm actually going to cut it longer this one's going to be about three and a half inches this one will be fine to cut it three that will keep us out of the rib on the barrel then we'll flip both barrels over and we'll start creating the water gutter. So now we got our two barrel tops cut out. Now I got one of the drums flipped upside down. I went ahead and cleaned up all the edges where I'm going to be working because one of those barrel tops is gonna to weld down out here to create our ceiling surface. <clears throat> but before that gets welded on, we need to cut out the middle of the bottom of the barrel, which all I do, however wide I want my gutter, this one in particular, I'm building it two inches, 
set my caliper to two inches, light it up, scribe the line all the way around. Now I'm going to blow that hole out with the plasma cutter. Then we're going to put in what will be the walls of the gutter and the funnel that will actually send all the wood down into the fire tube. So let's buzz that out real quick. You remember the eight inch rip that we took out of the bottom barrel? This is why we don't throw anything away from the barrels while we're building, because you can always use it later. We're gonna use this eight inch rip. You'd see me take it over to the uh, saw horses and beat this flange, just pull it halfway straight. It doesn't have to be even remotely close to perfect. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna take right where the barrel is seamed together from the factory, I'm gonna buzz it in half. Now because this is eight inches wide, I'm gonna make a center line at four inches all the way around. We're gonna take this cut edge, overlap it, and sink it through that hole. That's gonna do two things. We're gonna start a vertical wall right here that will end up being our bottom water gutter. And what's left up the top, we're going to split every couple inches, just like we did on the fire tube, fold those fins in, and that's gonna create the funnel for the wood to pass through to hit the fire tube. So I'm gonna get this buzzed in half and get some marks on it, and we'll get to that. So you saw me cut it in half, stuff it down in there. I marked about an inch and a half from where it overlaps, pull it back out, buzz it off. That's all the overlap it needs. We just need to make sure that we complete the circle so that we form both our gutter wall and our funnel up here. Before I get this welded in, I'm gonna go through and right up in here, I'm gonna cut some little notches. You could just grab this with a pair of pliers and bend it out. All you're looking to do is add a little bit of air circulation that can get into the hopper and help it condense. It also gets a little bit more heat in there to keep the tar liquid so that it can drain out better. But that's more or less how it looks. Um, now I gotta get this welded in. Then we're gonna go through and buzz some fingers into this thing and bend them in to form the funnel. That guy's all welded in. I did change it a little bit. This time I decided to go with uh, five inches sticking up because I'm gonna cut down to four to fold my fingers in. So we're fully welded all the way around, welded up the seam, both sides, because this is gonna have tar in it. Um, this out here, you do want to be watertight, but more so you want this watertight because there's gonna be tar in here and you'd like for it to seal up as quick as you can. But if you do have some little tiny pinholes, it's gonna seal up because there's gonna be tar in there and it's gonna bake, it'll harden and it'll stop it from leaking. But try and do everything right the first time. Don't rely on the tar to do it for you. So once that was all welded in, I just gave myself some reference marks, went down with the angle grinder, zipped this all into a bunch of fins, fold it in. So this is gonna create our funnel, because remember, we're looking at it upside down right now. This is the bottom of the hopper. This little ramp is gonna guide the chunks into the fire tube. And our opening is about 11 and a half to 12 inches, which our fire tube is 12 inches, plus the heat shields knocks it down to 11. So this is almost a perfect funnel coming out of the hopper to go straight inside the fire tube, feed those chunks in, we'll be making good gas in no time. Now because I got these all bent down, over time, chunks beating on these things as you're filling it up, it will try to open it up. So this will get some tack welds just on the fins all the way around it to keep it holding its shape. Then I'm gonna fill this up with water, water test this weld right here. Then we're gonna take one of our barrel tops, which I still need to finish cleaning it up, and that will get welded on right here. And just like you guys saw me when I was cutting the barrel tops off, I had a barrel uh, lid clamped on these things. Always have to keep them clamped. If you're cutting on them, if you're beating on them, if you're welding on them, if you're moving them around, these edges get bent up easily and even more easily 
when they have no structure underneath to keep it in place. This one is actually bent really badly. I have to work it really hard to get the lid on. Um, that's why I'm using it for the bottom of the hopper because I'm gonna have bolts that suck the whole thing together. So a little bit of bend in this one, I can work with it. But anyways, I'm gonna get these tack welds on, do the water test, get this welded down, and the bottom half of the hopper is done. The only thing that would be left is cutting off at whatever height we need. But I have to build the top of the hopper first before I can figure out where we need to cut. If you have the opportunity to get barrels that have straight sides instead of a ridge near the top, I would get those because I bet you you could hem it in just a little bit and get it to actually sit down inside the bottom lip on the drum. Mine, there was no way I was going to get that, so uh, I had to set it on top and weld it together. The big miller is turned down as low as it'll go, and that was a lot of work getting it stuck on there. I'm going to let this cool down before I pull the lid off because it's there's, there's quite a bit of heat in there. Now the top half of the hopper is almost identical in its build. Same exact thing. We cut out the two inch wide window, left that lip there, smoothed it off. This time around instead of having material hanging down underneath creating a funnel, we only need a single wall to create the gutter right here. So this is a two and a half inch rip out of a drum welded in place and then that other three inch barrel welded on the top. So top half of the hopper, bottom half of the hopper. Next episode we're going to be sticking them together. <laughs>